Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and this is another SpaceX launch I'm going to be talking about today because this one is kind of important and this one actually broke new records yet again. You may have already heard about this, this is the Space Ill mission that was launched by Israel only a few days ago from when I'm making this video and today I wanted to mention some of the really cool facts about this particular mission and also show you on uh, basically how this particular lander is going to be getting to the moon and landing there. But first, let's briefly discuss what this mission is about. So, back in 2011, a few people were sitting in a bar and talking about this particular Lunar X Prize. The Google Prize of $30 million to anyone who can build a rover, set it on the moon and have it move for about 500 meters or so. And so, these three Israeli entrepreneurs were essentially discussing on how to do it. And then, eventually they lost. And nobody actually won this, unfortunately, back in 2018. No one was able to create something that would actually land on our beautiful moon or maneuver there or do really anything. No one was even close, except for these three guys. And they actually wouldn't give up. They went to several different uh, startups in Israel. They also gathered a lot of political support and essentially they were able to collect about $100 million of funding to finish their project. And their project was, well, essentially a lander, a moon lander that was also able to hop around the moon and um, collect small bits of data about the lunar magnetosphere um, for about two days or so. That was its initial mission. And then once they realized they're not going to be able to win the $30 million from uh, Google, they decided that, well, you know, the jumping part is not really necessary because that was just to win the contest. Uh, so they decided to just settle it there for a couple of days, collect as much data as they can and call it quits. Basically, they decided to build the first ever private rover or technically hopper. And that's what they did. Fast forward seven years and Bereshi that you see right here was able to secure a spot on top of another um, launch that was pre-planned. Essentially, this is the SpaceX ride along that they provide as part of their services. And uh, they were launching along the Indonesian satellite uh, Nusantara Satu. That was actually uh, the first private Indonesian satellite that was launched. And um, the idea here was to hitch a ride and uh, once the SpaceX released the satellite, it would orbit around Earth with a very eccentric orbit, but would actually use its own engines to slowly gain boosts and um, increase its apoapsis, reaching the moon in a very challenging kind of a maneuver. So here is a simulation of how it's going to be done. It's going to be boosting its orbit right here at the closest approach to Earth, known as periapsis, and it's going to be doing it several times, as you can see. And every single passage is going to be uh, very precisely timed, and sometimes they're actually not going to have communication with the satellite, so it has to do it autonomously. And um, after several passages, it's going to be right here at the moon's intersect, and essentially just wait for the moon to get there, and once that's done, the moon will hopefully capture it and it will kind of automatically assume orbit around the moon. Now, the capture itself is relatively challenging. If you've ever played Kerbal Space Program, you know this is not a very easy maneuver. And so a lot of the things here have to be done um, autonomously. And so this is a relatively challenging mission for a first comer, for basically Israel's first ever mission. So if they can pull this off, if they can actually even get into moon's orbit, um, and on top of that, if they can land safely, I'm going to salute them with my imaginary hat. This, this mission here is absolutely mind-blowingly insane. Let me give you a perspective here. There's only three um, nations that were ever able to land on the moon. There was Soviet Union that failed miserably a few, first few times, and all of their launches were actually direct transfers. It was not a transfer that you see right here with constant boosts of orbit. Um, it was a direct transfer. Basically, the rocket just goes there directly and tries to land on the moon. There was US that also uh, missed a few times and had a few failures, but obviously both Soviet Union and US eventually landed their uh, rovers there after many, many tries, by the way. And then there's China that um, the first launch and the first rover that they landed was back in 2003. And that also kind of didn't go as planned. A few things failed. And only their recent rover, Chang'e 4, uh, was actually able to land successfully and seems to be functioning just fine. But that's um, basically the only three nations we have there. Israel might be the fourth nation and with a really challenging mission profile. 
So this will most likely happen sometime around April 14th or so. And by the time you're watching this video, it may have already happened. So it either failed miserably or they succeeded. And essentially I'm saluting them with my imaginary hat over and over because that's, that's just brilliant. But that's not the only thing that's impressive about this mission. The other thing that's really impressive is the amount of stuff it's actually bringing. So the actual mission will only last for two days because it doesn't have enough battery. Uh, but it also has a um, laser retrorefractor that was asked by NASA to be put here because they can use it for their deep space network communication. So it's actually going to uh, be functional technically as a passive uh, mirror kind of a thingy, um, even after it finishes its mission. So in that sense, it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's a pretty cool mission. It's going to become part of NASA's network, specifically the deep space network, also known as DSN. On top of that, um, it also has a magnetometer that will measure the magnetosphere of the moon for a couple of days until the battery expires. And so this will hopefully give us some more um, insight into what's happening on the moon with its magnetosphere. But what's most impressive about this mission is the amount of actual artifacts it's bringing with it. So this is about maybe um, one and a half meters tall. It's about basically five feet um, in height. But inside of this box, uh, Israel decided to include a lot of different things. First of all, there is this interesting coin that has the entire Hebrew Bible etched into it. Now, I know this is kind of bringing religion and politics into it, but just the fact that uh, this technology exists and we can actually etch an entire uh, relatively large book into this little coin is pretty impressive. On top of this, there is another collection of really interesting discs from the so-called Arch Mission Foundation, that's essentially humanity's backup plan, where they store everything that we currently have, literally like the entire encyclopedia of stuff, whatever they can get their hands on, and they store this on these beautiful laser disc-like objects, uh, one of which was actually launched with uh, SpaceX Tesla uh, last year. So these objects can store a tremendous amount of information, and there's a few of them inside of this rover uh, containing tons and tons of encyclopedias and all kinds of dictionaries and all sorts of information that was collected over years and years and years. There's also all sorts of um, children drawings and all sorts of literature and even photos of uh, the first ever Israeli astronaut and all kinds of um, Hebrew songs that are all packed into this little box and will stay there on the moon for generations, for possibly centuries, thousands, millions of years until we come back and pick it up. And the main point here is obviously somewhat cultural and somewhat uh, symbolic, but it's also to kind of leave this knowledge in different places around our solar system. Uh, that's basically the main purpose of the Arch Mission Foundation and to make sure that this knowledge doesn't just disappear if our civilization disappears. In other words, they're trying to collect this data and store it safely in various regions around the solar system. So what Israel is creating here is a kind of a time capsule on a completely different object in a solar system, which I think is pretty brilliant. Now, all in all, this mission was actually relatively cheap when it comes to space missions. All of this, including the actual launch and including the planning and research and basically getting it all together, cost them approximately $100 million, which is really, uh, I guess, a cost of a typical Hollywood movie nowadays um, and is equivalent or maybe a little bit more expensive than the Martian mission that uh, Indian Space Agency was able to achieve a few years ago. So when it comes to space missions, this is actually super cheap. Um, t a typical launch of a rocket usually costs about 40 to 60 million dollars. So yeah, that's not expensive at all. And we'll hopefully encourage other nations and also just other uh, startups to try to do something similar to basically uh, privatize the space sector and to kickstart humanity's adventure across space. Now, Everything I said so far was positive, but there was a small glitch already, and this is why I'm kind of getting a little bit worried about, about this mission. Um, a few days ago from when I'm making this video, or literally like a day after the launch, while the spacecraft was in this region, uh, where unfortunately Israel can't communicate with it, it was supposed to fire its engines and uh, begin one of its correction maneuvers, but it for some reason reset, it wasn't working. After the reset, everything was working fine, but they're still not sure what happened to the computer on board the uh, craft. And this glitch is a little bit worrisome because 
what happens after as it basically gains altitude and as it has to transfer to the moon and then land to, on the moon will require absolutely perfect precision so no glitches allowed anymore so let's see what happens um i'm actually kind of crossing my fingers i really hope this mission succeeds because it's going to inspire a generation of uh, explorers and a generation of space exploration hopefully will uh, actually encourage like i said other nations to join in this endeavor but um, I'm kind of getting a little bit worried that it might fail. I've actually been looking forward to this mission for a couple of years now. I've been following the progress for a while now. And I'm really, really secretly hoping that it succeeds and uh, creates a whole buzz uh, in the middle of April. But you never know, right? Anyway, so that's really all I wanted to show you in this video. You can uh, find some of the links that I mentioned in this video in the description below. Specifically, check out the Art Foundation. It's super cool what they're doing. And maybe even consider helping them out. I believe they do take donations, but they also have a team that you can join. So there's always stuff you can do for them or with them. Um, and their mission is actually kind of cool. I mean, basically, they're preserving the memory of humanity or the so-called billionaire archive, as they call it. All in all, though, I'm super excited to be following this mission, and I really hope that we'll get to see this landing is completed. Let's hope that this craft lands successfully. And, well, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, and maybe even come back tomorrow to watch something else you may have not known before. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.